All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So this time we are back to talk about Anubismon. So for the Nationals format for North America, this is expected to be one of the best decks that is going to be represented in the format for very good reason. Uh, this card is incredibly absurd, and it is incredibly versatile. And I have two different decks here for you today um, that kind of focus on just all of the things that you can do with this card, the variety in deck building that you can have, um, and really why this card needed to be limited to one. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Um, and let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below. We have this new setup, so we're able to do more kinds of content, not just deck profiles. Um, so we can start branching out. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the topic at hand today. So... For those of you that don't know what this card does, uh, it's a wind digivolving and a main effect. So if it sticks around until your next turn, you can use this effect again. It says once per turn, you can trash up to three cards in your hand. Then you get to play a purple card from your trash for the cost. When it would be played by this effect, you reduce the play cost by three and then by one more for each card that you trashed. If a Digimon is played by any effects during your turn, you can delete a level 5 or lower Digimon, and if nothing was deleted, you draw a card. So, whenever you are playing Digimon, you are getting a lot of value. Uh, notice that the second effect is not once per turn. So if you do something like use Anubis to play Merva, Merva, and then Merva will play things, uh, you will get double pops with Anubis until you just can't pop things anymore, and then you just start drawing cards. In addition, because you are playing, you can still trigger things like Digicross with this, uh, so that you can put the Ignite Mon under it, you know, uh, gain a bunch of memory back from that, and then be playing a Merva Mon for, what, one memory? Uh, because it's going to reduce it by six, so you're paying five. Okay, so you're it's for four, which is incredible. Um, this this play will allow you to put f four bodies into play because Merva will play two itself. Uh, the Anubis will play it. The um, Merva, so, you know, that's that's four. That's a lot of bodies. Uh, the Merva will give a lot of things rush and blocker, and then you have this fully established board. Not only that, but you can use Anubis to go super wide. You can use it in decks like this, to play back things like Leviamon, which we get in the next set. Uh, this card has an on-play effect that says if your opponent has equal or more Digimon and Tamers than you, you delete something that they have with the highest level, and then you delete their Digimon with the lowest level. And all turns, when an opponent's Digimon is deleted, you gain one memory for each Digimon deleted by this effect. Or, by any effect. So, if you use Anubis to pull back Leviya, you can reduce this cost by 6, making it a 7 cost. Leviya will pop 2, uh, and then you'll gain two, back, or 2 memory back. Potentially, the Anubis will pop more things, potentially giving you up to 2 more memory. So, you can Leviamon for just 1 memory, blow up 2 bodies, and have 2 level 6 Digimon in play, one of which has Sec Attack plus 1. So... This is a very, very strong card by itself, and it just enables so many other things. Um, this card definitely deserved to be limited to one. Um, it is like Tidamon from BT6, but really stupid. Um, it has the ability to just make a lot of things really dumb, and a lot of aspects of the game really dumb by being able to put on just whatever you need to put on. If you want defense, Anubismon has it. If you need to just flood the board with bodies so that you can win the game, Anubismon has that too. So it's one of those decks that I will definitely be messing around with in EX5. And it is one of those decks that everybody's going to play this deck a little bit differently. You'll see some people use the Gabumon X cards and like the Gururumon X while they're still legal to get a bunch of cards and trash really quickly. Um, I, with these decks, am taking a more generic route. I am playing the, like, the Dobermon X and the Cerberus Mon X from EX5, um, because these cards have fantastic inheritable effects that say when you play a Digimon, you get to gain a memory, uh, which means that if you have this and the Cerberus Mon in your sources, then, 
Um, whenever you evolve an Anubis, you pull something back, you're gaining two memory back from that. Um, which means that if you wisdom training into Anubis, the cost of digivolving into the Anubis is essentially completely mitigated at that point. Um, it's a it's a really strong play, and there's a lot that you have going for you. So this list that I'm showing you guys first um, is more focused on doing either an Anubis or a Titamon push first. Um, being able to swing with sec attack up or just multiple times because of Cerberus Mon X's inheritable effect, um, which will let you delete something else that you have whenever you attack to unsuspend your attacking Digimon, which is absolutely fantastic, especially with Titamon, um, because then you can just hit four checks that way. And even with, like, things like the Anubis, then you can just pull back, uh, levels, level fours go into this and... You're all hunky dory. Um, so, yeah, this is the first deck that I'm going to be bringing you guys. You have a lot of inheritable effects like the Goblimon, the Labramon, the Dobermon X, and the Cerberus Mon X to gain you memory whenever you either discard a card or pull a body back, um, making all of your top end plays pretty cheap. You have these Nidhogs to help you discard to get some extra memory back. The mat's going to get you some extra memory back. Um, and then you have things like Leviamon that you can pull back. You have the one-in-one -one split here with Leviamon and Death Exmon to have a lot of control on the board. Really only need one or the other in any given situation, so I like doing the one-in-one -one split. But again, this deck is super flexible, so you can go up or down on any of these numbers. Um, again, you can even pull back, back Death Exmon uh, with Anubismon's effect, which I think is pretty silly. Um, and the Death Exmon will continue to reduce its own cost through things like that. So, taking us through it real quick, I think Sunomon from BT6 is still the best egg that you could be playing in a deck like this. Uh, the, inher the Inheritable Effect that says if you trash a card, you get to draw a card, will really cycle all of your plays a little bit forward. Um, Ignitemon not only has a really great Inheritable Effect to give you memory back, um, and it has a really good att win attacking effect, but it also is key Merva food, um, so you need to play four copies of this. So for my rookies, I'm playing four of the Ignite, four of the Labramon, and two copies of the Goblimon from BT14. Um, Goblimon can give you back a memory whenever you discard a card, and then the four copies of this Labramon, because it actually has an on-play effect, um, which will let you trash a card and then pull back a Dark Animal or a Shaman from your trash. So this card is really great because you are pulling this back whenever you're evolving into the Cerberus Mon X, um, which will let you pull back any purple level 3. So that you can pull this back, trash something, and either grab back an Anubis, a Merva, or a Titamon, or anything else in your line that you need because Dobermon X and Cerberus Mon X are both dark animals. Um, so that's, that's really great. And then all of these Inheritables will give me memory whenever I'm doing anything on my turn. So I'm playing those 10 rookies uh, for my level 4s. I chose to play the Dobermon X because it's a windage evolving. You draw one, trash one, which is pretty on par with the Garurumon X that we're getting in this set. Um, that card is absolutely broken, by the way, and you could choose to include more of those cards in this list. Um, I think that the Dobermon X has a little bit more synergy with this style and this archetype, while the Gabumon and the Gurumon are more focused towards uh, lower-to-the-ground decks, um, things that want to cap out at level 4, think like Beal Star or even just pure Merva. So I really like what Dobermon is able to do for this deck. Um, and then if you have X Antibody in your sources, you can activate the on-play effect, which will give something Retaliation. Another reason that we are playing four copies of this is because this is a card that we can pull back off of the Merva, since Merva pulls back level four or lower purple dudes, and then it'll give anything with retaliation, uh, rush, and blocker. So this can give itself retaliation whenever it plays itself, and then that will trigger the Merva's effect. So this has inherent synergy with Merva, inherent synergy with Anubis and Titamon, and I think that this is just a really fantastic card in your level 4 slot, and probably one of the best four, level 4s that you could be playing if you choose not to include the Guru Room on X package. So, I did want to make use of this. We do have the Dobermon in the deck as well. It's a cheap, hard, or it's a cheap 4 cost to hard play, and an inheritable effect of Retaliation is pretty nice. Um, 
you can come you can combine that with a lot of effects like with the Merva to give things on your higher level rush. Um, and then we do have the Ginkaku Promote and the Black Gato to pull back with things like Titamon, with things like Anubismon to give us rush. Um, again, retaliation on an inheritable effect is really nice, which is why we are playing the one Black Gato and the one Ginkaku Promote in this particular list. But if you don't like the Black Gato, you can just play two copies of the Ginkaku Promote. It's a cheaper Evo cost, and it does essentially the same thing. It's just this is a lower play cost, so you need to discard less cards to make this card free off of Anubis. So pick your poison there. And then the one copy of Scatter Mode is still really great cycle. Um, I like this card as a one-of in pretty much any purple deck that I'm allowed to play it in. Um, again, unless I need my level 4s for something. So, for the level 5s, the main one that you are playing is going to be the Cerberus Mon X. Um, again, that inheritable effect to get an unsuspend is really key. lets you put on a lot of aggression. Um, and then if you have X Antibody in your sources, whenever you Digivolve into this, you are not only drawing one and trashing one, but you are also activating its on play, which will let you play a level 3 purple Digimon from your trash. Um, which is really fantastic. So, with this deck, we are playing an X Antibody. We got the X Antibody protoform here, which will allow us to activate this card and then immediately tuck it under a Digimon and then Digivolve into an X Antibody Digimon for one less than it would normally cost. So, for example... If we tuck this under a level 3, then we can go into Dobermon X for one memory and then activate all of these effects. If we tuck this under a level 4, then we can go into Cerberus Mon X for two memory and then activate all of these effects. So it's a really good card in the deck, and not only that, but it allows us to have some level of protection on our top end and have some recursion with this card because this card is just going to float back to security and then you're going to be able to get it again out of your security. So... This is a really great card and something that I'm really excited to be playing around with in the BT15 form, or EX5 and BT15 formats. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this. We have a bunch of boost. Uh, Wisdom Training is really good in this list. Uh, we want to be able to reduce our costs going up. Matt's really good because we can gain memory off of the things that we discard. We have Calling to get some of our pieces back. I am choosing to play two Missed Memory Boost in this list because because it can help us get some things in the trash, but most of the time you're discarding things when you need them in the trash off of your just win digivolving effects. Uh, like with Anubis, you can discard a card and then pull back the card that you discarded as long as there was something in your trash before you resolve that effect. Um, and same with Tida. So you never really need the specific pieces in your trash before you start comboing up. So... You could change the ratio on Miss Memory Boost and Purple. You could even just go full-on Purple Memory Boost in this slot. Um, it's kind of dealer's choice there. There are a lot of options in a deck like this. But yeah, with your level 6s, this is kind of where the lists really kind of take a life of their own as well. Um, you could do something like a 3 Anubis, 3 Merva, 1 Leviah split with a couple Nidhogs to discard. Um, and then some Titamon as a uh, more aggressive backbone piece. Um, or you could play something like this list where it's mostly Anubis and mostly Leviamon. So you're doing an immense amount of board control um, while being able to spam the board with things like the Anubis Merva combo. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility here. Um, something I do want to point out is when Anubis Mon does go to one in any list that you were playing, like, just a shit ton of Anubismon in, you could replace some of those Anubismon with Titamon and get very similar results, uh, because this is just when Digivolving, discarding a card, and pulling back a level 4 or lower. So this can't do some of the more broken things that Anubismon can do, like revive a Death Exmon, revive a Leviamon, or even revive Merva, but what it can do is revive something like a Ginkaku Promote, uh, you swing Ginkaku Promote, you swing with Taita with Sec Attack plus one because it, you discarded a card, you're going to trigger that second effect, um, and then trigger the Cerberus Mon's Inheritable effect to unsuspend the Taita and then get two more swings, or get another swing at two more checks, letting you deal five securities worth of damage off of one tower, um, which is really impressive. So... Yeah, I do think Titamon is a very viable replacement in 
uh, BT-15 whenever we do get the Anubis Mon limit. That's kind of why I was testing this deck as, for as much as I was. Like, Tidamon, I think, is a really strong card. It was just printed well before its time. Like, well before we had viable support. And now all of the Anubis Mon support is just support for this card as well. So you have a lot of options here. Um, looking at the second deck list for a little bit, um, the main difference here is how you play it. It's more focused on that control style aspect, um, where you're trying to use the Anubis to pull back, like, the Levia to clear the board, or use the Anubis to pull back the Merva to just kind of go ham. We have things like the Garurumon in this list that can trigger out of security to play cards like our Gabumon or like our Matt, um, and give us a little bit more um like tempo whenever our opponent is trying to swing into us not only that but this card helps facilitate our uh our tower climb by letting us draw and discard whenever we're evolving up um and it's got a nice inheritable and this card combos really nicely with the guru room on x should we decide to play it um and that's that's really nice this deck has a lot of things that you can choose to include as well things like the biting crush um, this is a fantastic card coming into the next format, and it's something that we haven't really seen before in the Digimon card game. It is a delay effect that triggers on any turn when an opponent plays a Digimon by effect. You can just pop this card off and then pull back a Leviamon from your trash and then just blow up the board. Um, and that's really fantastic for a deck like this. The main weakness of this card is you do have to discard a demon lord in order to get it to linger in the battle area um which is why we are playing more copies of, of leviamon in a deck like this one um but yeah this is a deck that is focused on just building your first tower into something like anubis or getting a bunch of cycle with your lower end bodies uh because we still have the scatter mode we still have the dobermon we still have all of these good cards in our lower end um and we still just have a lot of ways to search our pieces, like the Purple Memory Boost, like the Wisdom Training. Um, something that I did want to point out is if you are playing this Dobermon, the one from EX2, with the Dobermon X package, uh, you could choose to include this Alice McCoy as well. That'll make the Dobermon super cheap, and this card is really kind of stupid if you're like using this in conjunction with Leviamon or Anubis, uh, because you can just make those Digivolution cost super cheap, if not free, um, especially in the case where Leviamon is gaining memory back, and it's just, it's really nice. Um, again, the main point of this video is I wanted to point out that there are a lot of options for decks like this whenever you start deck building. I don't expect any of you to take just one of these lists that I'm showing you here today and use it verbatim to win nationals, but these are going to be some jumping off points for me whenever I start opening my product for EX5. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys are looking to play with in the comments down below. Uh, one thing that I did want to do before closing out this video is I did want to pull out or pull up the Guru Room on X on the screen for you uh, just to kind of go over it a little bit. You get to watch me do this in real time. Well, maybe not. What am I doing wrong? Oh, gotta click the merge button. Yeah, this card. So, this is a card that I think gets more powerful the more Gabumon you can fit in your lower end. Uh, since I am trying to build the first tower and gain a bunch of memory off the first tower, um, I do really value the inheritable effects like this Labramon, like this Ignitemon. Um, but if you want to start cutting down some of these cards to make more room for Gabumons, then this engine gets a lot better. Likewise, if you wanted to remove Dobermon X completely from either of these lists and play a card like this Garurumon X, that would be really beneficial for you. If you are not playing Garurumons in your top end, your inheritable effect is pretty much useless. Um, 
when digivolving, you're going to draw to and trash to. And then if you have a Garurumon or an X Antibody in your Digivolution card, you get to gain a memory, um, which is really nice with the X Antibody Proto form. And it's really nice in decks like Beal Star that need a lot of cards and trash really quickly. Like I said, I don't think these decks need a lot of cards and trash really quickly. So I think that this card is kind of less powerful in the Anubis Leviah style decks or the Anubis Merva style list. But in Anubis plus anything else, this might be the way. So it's something that you should really consider when deck building. Um, but I do think playing a line like this does kind of pigeonhole you into certain selections. So it is one of those things that you have to think carefully about when choosing your cards for deck building. Um, but that is something that I wanted to bring up because these cards are interchangeable with any of these lists that I've shown you today. But yeah, that's that about does it. Um, this is going to be the deck that I'm going to be tinkering with for the majority of EX5 format until these cards get limited. And if I was playing at Nationals this year, um, some variation of this deck is most definitely what I would be taking. Um, unless I perfected a really nice Beale Star list that I would definitely take before then. And we will be showing Beale Star on the channel probably probably this week as well. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below. I've been rambling on for a bit, so hope you guys like the video, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.